welcome to another product introduction video. We at Admin Head are excited to introduce you to our latest release of DNS clustering solution, GDNS Cluster version 4. To those who have already used our earlier version of GDNS Cluster, we will walk through all the new changes we have made in this new version. If you are new to the term DNS clustering or if you would like to implement DNS clustering in your existing environment, we would explain how you can implement DNS clustering using our solution in this video. The GDNS cluster setup starts with the installation of GDNS controller, which should be installed on a standalone server with no control panels. The installer will install all dependencies including Bind, Apache, MySQL, PHP, etc. Once the installation completes, you can access the interface via web browser by entering your IP address slash GDNS controller. You will be greeted with a login page. Enter using the default login sent to you in product information email. Once logged in, a slider showing different cluster possibilities you can build using our solution can be seen. If you have used our earlier version of GDNS, you will find the interface has a completely new look. We have also introduced an easy walkthrough to help our new customers effortlessly get started with the initial setup of the cluster. Mind you, the walkthrough will appear only once and we advise that you go through till the end. Our interface has a two pane layout. The left pane gives you easy access to specific items you want to check. At the right pane you can perform various operations under each item or monitor the actions performed. At the home you will find the cluster overview. Here you have a complete view of your DNS clustering environment. It also shows the status of various servers, active or inactive, connected to the controller. The left side shows transfer servers added and the right side shows any edge servers you may have added. The interface also shows the detected operating system, Windows or Linux and the control panel plus or C panel. You will also find a shortcut to add a new transfer or edge server here. In the middle, you will find the JDNS controller or the main controller. In case you have a JDNS failover edition, you will see the added failover controller there. At the bottom, you will find a summary of the number of domains and different servers added to the controller. In the left pane under Manage, you will find Manage Cluster. In it, we have Manage Transfer, Manage Edge and Manage Failover. Adding transfer server is quite simple. Click on add transfer. Here you have the option to add a single server or multiple servers at once. You'll find the status of the server as inactive. This is because we haven't installed the transfer plugin in the added server yet. A transfer server is a server with a control panel like cPanel or Plus. This is the server where you have all the domains hosted and also your domain's authoritative name server. We will not be walking through the Plus transfer server extension version 4 or cPanel transfer plugin version 4 in this video. But here is a quick view how the interface will look like once installed. This is the Plus extension and here is the cPanel extension. Once the transfer server plugin is installed, you'll find the status active. Similarly, you can add the edge server using add edge in manage edge. Edge server is a server with no control panels which receives DNS updates from the controller and is used for additional DNS redundancy. In the case the controller goes down, the edge servers will still be able to handle any DNS queries. Once added, run the installer on the edge server and then the status of the server will show as active. Like in manage transfer, here as well you have the option to edit or remove added servers. Also, you can search and filter active or inactive servers. Next is the Manage Failover. This is where you can add a single failover controller. Once again you will find the server status as active after the failover installer has been run on the server. You will have a similar interface at the failover controller which can be accessed using the browser URL. 
your failover IP address slash GDNS failover. This is to ensure you can still manage the cluster in an event the main controller is down. Here you find the last transfer time, which is the last time transfer of signed zone files which was made from the controller. The sync status states whether the signed zone files transferred is in sync with the signed zone files present at the controller. Last synced domain gives you the most recent domain whose signed zone files was transferred to the failover controller. Domain count is the number of signed domain zone files received at the failover. Unlike all other plugins we have released, we have included a page in the interface where you can view the license information of the product. License details include details such as GDNS Cluster Edition, the number of transfer and edge servers your license supports, also whether your license allows a failover controller or addition of Windows plus transfer servers. You will also find an upgrade button to upgrade your license. Maybe you would want to add more transfer or edge servers to the cluster or change the cluster edition. After your license is renewed, you can use Retrieve to recheck the license. You will notice a secret key button. This key is used to authenticate the request received from the transfer server. Hence, you will need to copy and paste this key at the transfer server interface when you add a new transfer server. We have also included logging for every operation in the DNS clustering. Any errors reported can be viewed under a log. Here you can view the error description, sort or even do a search. Once you have added the servers transfer edge or failover necessary for the DNS clustering, the next step would be to track the domain zone file transfer and signing process in the cluster. For this, in the left plane we have the received zone and signed zones. Received zones show you all zone files received from the various transfer servers that you have added to the DNS cluster. It shows the status of a DNS service on the transfer server, number of domain zone files received and the last transfer time. Once you click under view to expand, you will find the list of domains whose zone file has been received and if the zone file was signed successfully. You can view the zone file from under action. This way you can see and track the zone modification made at the authoritative name server and whether it was transferred successfully to the controller. Another new feature we have included is Change Association. Change Association was introduced to avoid duplicate zone files from being created for the same domain at the controller. This can happen during domain migration within your hosting servers. In such a situation as the administrator, you can choose the server whose zone file of that domain should be accepted by the controller. Click on the lock icon. In pop up window, use the drop down to select the transfer server and then click update to change association. A solution supports DNSSEC by default. You can track the signed domains from the signed zones. Click on the globe icon to view the necessary details required to set up the DS record at your domain registrar. The signed file transfer indicates whether the signed zone file was transferred to the failover controller. You'll find the status of all domains as never by default if there is no failover controller added in your cluster environment. At the edge status, you will find all edge servers you have added. Status shows whether DNS service is active on the edge server. Domain count indicates the number of domains whose zone files were transferred to the edge server from the controller. Once you expand view, you will find the list of domains which has been synced to the edge server. Received indicates the original transfer server from which the domain zone files was received. Another major change in this new version of GDNS is a comprehensive DNS management interface that allows you to create a DNS zone on the controller such as for a domain hosted on a server with no control panel. 
At the locally added zone, use add new zone to create a domain zone. Add new zone has two steps, first to create the SOA record and then to create other needed resource records. Once the details needed for the SOA record has been filled and saved, you can create the other needed resource records. We support all popular record types. Once the records are added, click on update to add these records to the zone. You can also view, edit and delete the created domain zone. We also have included an administrative profile, which you can access by clicking on the icon at the top right corner. You can change the password of the controller interface from the change admin password section. That's all folks. I hope this video was helpful to understand how you can implement our improved DNS clustering solution, GDNS Cluster Version 4. Please do not hesitate to reach out to us if you have any questions regarding implementing it. Thank you for watching this video and we wish you a great day.